This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to take a look at the fifth generation iPod Touch. Right here, it's available in six colors, uh, including the product red version. You can see, totally new look here. Nice anodized kind of aluminum unibody back. Four inch display, just like the iPhone 5, and a lot of the same goodies you get inside of the iPhone 4S. We're going to take a look at it now. So the fifth generation iPod Touch is just available now. You'll probably find it in a couple of Apple stores. Hopefully it'll start streaming into other stores soon. And it starts at $299. Gone is that magic, or what I would consider magic, $199 price point where you don't start to sweat a little when you're spending money on a well, portable media player, game thing, whatever you want to call it. But now you have 32 and 64 gig options. Only the 16 gig is gone. And given how big games are getting these days in movies, that's probably a logical thing. So $299 will get you a 32 gig model, and $399 will get you the 64 gig model. That's actually the same price as the iPhone 5 with subsidy. But aha, you're saving a lot of money here because you don't have to get a cell phone contract with this. Obviously, this is a Wi-Fi only device. So what do you get for your money? You get a 4-inch Retina display. Again, you're talking the same stuff as the iPhone 5. It's 1136 pixels by 640 pixels. It is no wider than the last generation iPod Touch does because it has the same number of pixels across. That means it's equally as easy to hold in your hand without having to worry about it. Obviously, it's going to have to be taller here. Otherwise, certainly the spirit of the iPod lives on in design. We have the front face here in white, our little belly button. You're always going to have an iOS device. It's incredibly thin. It's a quarter of an inch. And it's got that wraparound unibody aluminum casing that feels nice. It's sort of satiny in the hand. It's not just slippery. And here we have this interesting little thing poking out, and that is for the included wrist strap or lanyard. And you can push it in and spring loaded so it goes back in. So if you're not going to use it, it just stays flat. But obviously, you're always going to see that little disc there. I know you guys probably will never use that lanyard, but. I think Apple's trying to make it seem like it's a point-and-shoot camera, maybe, or just to help you not lose it, because this thing is incredibly small, thin, and light. Speaking of light, it is 3.1 ounces. The back here, you see your 5-megapixel camera with LED flash, and this little black spot here, that's the antenna window for your Wi-Fi and your Bluetooth to ensure that you get pretty decent reception. This does have dual-band Wi-Fi 802.11bgn, and it has Bluetooth 4.0, and it's also got Nike support. Up top, there's your power button just as you would expect. Nothing on that side. Here's our new lightning connector down here. The new 8-pin connector comes with the proper cable for that. 30-pin connector is gone. That means unless you get Apple's $29 adapter, this will not work with accessories that have a 30-pin dock connector. Headphone jack on the bottom. Little speaker holes there. And our volume controls. Certainly a nice looking product and it's available in a selection of colors so there's probably going to be something that floats your boat. You can pick blue, you can pick green, we've obviously got the pink one here, there's the product red one, white, black, yeah. And on the front here you'll notice this little dot, we have a 1.2 megapixel FaceTime camera. She can shoot 720p video, pretty good quality, certainly a step up. And the rear camera, well you know a 5 megapixel autofocus camera, that's about so-so for a, a decent smartphone, but compared to the last generation iPod Touch with this less than a megapixel camera, you're just going to be in heaven with this camera. It's about on par with the iPhone 4, which is to say that's a pretty decent camera. Not You're not going to get the beautiful shots that you might from the iPhone 5 or even the, the 4S with the 8 megapixel camera, but this can shoot 1080p video out the rear, and as long as lighting is good, I found it takes pretty decent shots. One thing that you will notice if you're coming from the fourth generation iPod Touch is an increase in speed. Now this guy has about the same brains as the iPhone 4S, so it's not as smart as the new iPhone 5, but still the iPhone 4S marked that jump to a dual core A5 CPU considerably faster than the single core A5 that was used in the iPod Touch or the iPhone 4. So if you've been feeling the pain when you've been trying to play games with this, which obviously is one of the primary uses of this product, you're going to notice a lot of improvement. And that's an 800 megahertz dual core A5, by the way, with dual core graphics. Now, right now, I'd say that every game I've thrown at it plays just fine. I don't feel like it's slow, laggy, or prone to crash. But I can tell you that I've owned iPod Touches in the past. Often I have an Android phone and I use the iPod Touch for the games and all the neat iOS apps that are out there. And at first, it seems like a great thing, and then about six months or a year later, you know, because there's always some new, more powerful iPad or iPhone out there, developers keep making games more and more demanding, and the iPod Touch starts to feel kind of slow or laggy. 
But for right now, it's feeling just fine and just fast. But like I said, down the road a year from now, you probably will notice that you don't have the fastest CPU that's available like you're getting in the iPhone 5. But that's always been the iPod Touch dilemma. It's always a generation behind in terms of the horsepower internals that you've got inside. Still, it's certainly a very smart and capable device. Again, I mean, the iPhone 4S itself is still a pretty zippy thing. And as you expect, the UI is very responsive here. And we'll play some games so you can see what that's like. Another new feature is Siri. This runs iOS 6 and it comes with Siri. Now if you have a fourth generation iPod Touch, you could upgrade to iOS 6, but you don't get Siri because Apple says it needs that dual core in there to actually power Siri. Now one thing to remember with this compared to the iPhone is that, well, it's only Wi-Fi, right? There is no 3G or 4G here, so Siri requires a data connection. Anything that you say to it gets sent up to a server to actually be interpreted and then it shoots the results back down. So this is only as useful with Siri as your closest Wi-Fi access point, or if you own a mobile hotspot and you're using that, that's great. But otherwise, it's Siri and all of its, generally speaking, glory. Uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty intelligent. It can find nearby movies, uh, give you weather reports, find folks in your contacts, launch applications. It, it's, a, it's quite a powerful and, generally speaking, accurate voice command system. What's Apple's stock price? <laughs> well, not a good day for Apple, but a good day for Siri there that worked quite well. In terms of built-in applications, it's just what you would expect. You've got your PIM applications, you have your calendar, you have your photos, you have your camera app. Passbook, new for iOS 6, is on board here. You have your weather, we have maps, and that means Apple Maps, not Google Maps. You've heard all about that. You know what that is. Video player to play your locally stored videos. Uh, of course, anything you sync with iTunes, and you can use iCloud with this and do iCloud syncing. Yeah, by the way, when you set up this guy, you, you no longer have to plug in the cable to your PC to actually set it up and activate it. You can do it all on device if you want and avoid the whole PC connection. That's useful for those of you who might be buying this for your kids and you really don't want them mucking around with your PC so much. We've got our iTunes app. We have our newsstand, notes, reminders, clock, stock app, Game Center, of course, the App Store, iTunes we've mentioned, settings, and messages, mail email in other words, Safari web browser, and the music player. So that's what you get built in there. And then we've downloaded a whole bunch of games here we're going to demo for you, and iBooks. We're going to take a look at iBooks because some of you may want to use this as a portable ebook reader. And we're loading this book for the first time. And speeds are just fine. Really lovely display. Nice contrast, good brightness as well. Uh, generally speaking, iPod Touches are a little bit dimmer than the, the iPhone, but in this case, I'd say it's, you're getting about the same amount of brightness. Now, that may affect battery life a little bit. So far, we've found with video playback that it uses up battery more quickly if you've got the brightness set pretty high compared to the fourth generation iPod Touch. But if you're keeping it at a brightness, say 50% or so, then I think you should expect oh, about five and three quarter to six hours of video playback time at least, maybe a little bit more at 50%. If you're maxing out the brightness, you're looking more at five and a half hours of video playback. But anyway, our book is looking great here. It's responsive. It works. Very sharp, easy on the eyes. Certainly nice as a pocket ebook reader. And here we've got the Safari web browser loaded on our website, Mobile Tech Review. Nice and fast as always. Good zooming speeds. Works just fine. And the SunSpider JavaScript test, it scored 1785, which puts it up there with today's faster smartphones. Still not as fast as the record-breaking iPhone 5 that scored 935, where lower numbers are better, but that is way beyond faster than anything else on the market at the moment. On Geekbench, in terms of speed, just for measuring your, your CPU and GPU, this scored a 670, which is about half of the iPhone 5 and on par with the iPhone 4S, again, just as you would expect. Now, to compare it to the iPhone 5, which I have in this hand here, you can see just about the same size footprint, where the difference is going to be in thickness. The iPhone is obviously thicker, closer to a third of an inch rather than a quarter of an inch. Both pretty skinny devices, though. 
and the different back treatment. As you can see, we've got the wraparound aluminum here in a color versus your choice of either black or white aluminum with white or plastic strips at the top and bottom. And now for maybe less expected comparison, but, but no doubt it's still relevant, here we have the 5th gen iPod Touch in front of the Amazon Kindle Fire HD. Now the Kindle Fire HD actually starts $100 less than this little iPod Touch. Uh, you know, in the U.S. we tend to think bigger is better and we should pay more for bigger. That isn't always the case. Miniaturization does cost some money. But that said, beyond that, I think that they do serve some of the same purposes. And you can say the Nexus 7 does to a certain extent, though Amazon has more of the turnkey store setup on here that kind of matches the iTunes functionality where you can easily stream movies, music, buy stuff, buy books, all that kind of thing on the Kindle Fire HD as well. So, yes, you can spend $100 less and get this bigger device. Now, this is the point where you can say to yourself, what is it you want? Obviously, the iPod Touch here is an awful lot smaller. This fits in your pocket. This fits anywhere. Very thin, very small device. The Kindle Fire, even though it's only a 7-inch device, looks absolutely huge next to it. So, if huge sounds good to you, you want more space for games and for reading books and for browsing the web, well, the Kindle Fire could make some sense for you. But if portability counts... Uh, or especially if you're giving this to a, a kid who may have small hands, then uh, the iPod Touch makes a lot more sense. If you want a pocket music player, again, iPod Touch makes sense. You're not going to go jogging with this Kindle Fire HD, I would warrant. Typical of Apple, the camera interface is very minimal. You've got your giant shutter button right here. You can switch between photo and video. You can control the flash, switch between your cameras, and here's your options. You can do panorama. You've got HDR here, which is always nice to have. And other than that, it's pretty much just point and shoot. Very simple. Shutter times are very fast. So we'll move faster if we actually have something to focus on. So we're going to tap to focus there. Good speeds. And again, it can also shoot 1080p video. And as long as light is decent, it takes pretty nice shots and pretty nice video. Uh, frame rates will drop when you're shooting video if you're shooting in a dark location, for example. And you'll get some more noise, but all in all, a pretty decent camera. Other iOS 6 goodies are here, again, besides the new Passbook application. In Siri, we've got the Notification Center running up top here, just like you'd see on an iPhone. All good stuff. We have iMessage on board, so you don't have to have an iPhone to do iMessage, of course. You can do that on any of your very recent iDevices. And it can do AirPlay mirroring if you happen to have an Apple TV, also handy. Video playback is always is very capable, and really with this nice retina screen, it's going to look good. We have a trailer here. It's actually a full 1080p trailer, and you can hear the really tinny speaker. Thank God for the headphone jack. But it looks great, and smooth frame rates. Now speaking of headphones, here's the usual box that an iPod Touch comes in. Heavy Lucite. You get your little welcome guide in here, and you get your new EarPod headphones, which I do happen to like. They do sound better, and at least when it comes to my ears, they do stay in better. You get a lanyard strap, again a wrist strap in matching color, matches whatever color iPod Touch you buy, and we here have our lightning cable with the new 8-pin smart connector that goes in either way. There is no wrong way to stick that in anymore. And now to test out gaming, we're starting with Modern Combat 3. Now notice there are black bars on the side here while I get annihilated. That's because this game has not been updated for the big 4-inch display yet, running at higher resolution. So that's Modern Combat 3 on the iPod Touch 5th Gen. And now we're in Death Rally. Game runs just fine. And now we're in Dead Trigger, a very demanding game. Starting out with our little tutorial session. So far so good, playing smoothly. Looking for some undead friends to play with here. One thing to note that this, because it is so thin, there's not much between you and the CPU and the parts that get hot. If you're playing games, you will feel some heat coming right through the screen. Even. Plays absolutely just fine. 
So clearly, if you want to buy one of these to play games, it's doing the job nicely. And just like the iPhone running iOS 6, we have Do Not Disturb as a feature here. You can turn it on and off right from this screen if you want to do that immediately. So you can see here, you can set up a schedule. So the thing is going to wake you up in the night if you've got a million game center notifications, friend requests, or anything else. Always handy. So that's the fifth generation iPod Touch. Again, it's available now in your choice of six colors, starting at $299 for the 32 gig, and 64 gig will cost you $399. Good looking, light, slim, sturdy. Certainly, I think this is going to scratch a lot less than the last mirrored back model, the fourth generation iPod Touch, that looked good for all about five minutes before it started picking up scratches. So I applaud the change in color and design on the back here. It's still way ahead of other portable media players slash game devices that are on the market. The Samsung Galaxy Player would be the nearest competitor, and that you can actually get with bigger size screen. But honestly, the thing is, this is still more turnkey. There's still a lot more, particularly games, and I think that's going to be of interest for this kind of device available. The easy use of iTunes Store for music, for videos, all that kind of thing. So uh, this is still more elegant and more fluid. Now, if you love Android, obviously the Galaxy Player is going to be more suitable to you, but... I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to visit our website for the full review of the 5th generation iPod Touch and subscribe to our YouTube channel.